building and running the world's AI superhighways to connect the growing number of data centers being lit up is a key role being played by the world's fiber infrastructure operators, one of which is Aurelion. I'm talking today with Aurelion CEO Daniel Kurgan to get an update on the company's strategy and its take on the market. So Daniel, thanks so much for joining us today. Great to see you. Um, so maybe to start, can you give us a, a brief overview of Aurelion and its role in the communications networking ecosystem? Sure. Uh, and thank you for having me again. Uh, so as many of you know, Aurelion is the former uh, Telia carrier. It used to be so the international uh, business of Telia was carved out in 2020 and acquired by um, infrastructure fund Polem Infra that itself belongs to state-owned Swedish pension fund. Um, we are the world number one IP backbone, which is of course our, our pride. And we have a network of about 77,000 kilometers of um, uh, mostly terrestrial fiber, but also submarine cables and 350 points of presence. Uh, I, I, I used to say we are very much a northern hemisphere business with uh, uh, a big half of the business in, in Europe and an increasing part in North America, extending to Mexico and in the northern part of Asia. That's about us in a nutshell. Okay. And, and what kind of customers do you have? Who, who are you providing services to? So Aurelion is originally a, a, a big wholesale uh, uh, provider. Um, and, and that is still what we, what we do a lot. Now, when we are talking about wholesale, we are extending this to, um, many different segments from the pure, I mean, traditional telcos and broadband providers to hyperscalers, uh, CDNs and the likes. But we are also delivering services to large enterprises across, uh, US and Europe. Now, uh, Aurelian has been in this market a long time and is well known for identifying and quantifying industry trends. Uh, what, if anything, has changed in the data transport services sector since you became the company CEO in late 2023? I mean, for example, are you seeing any evidence that AI workloads are moving the needle on data traffic volumes? Yes. We do see that uh, we well we see different things. First of all, uh, it, the the growth of IP traffic uh, doesn't diminish, and that is also uh, partly a consequence of of AI, AI workloads increasing. But what we see, uh, like many of our uh, peers in the industry, is an uh, unprecedented demand for data center to data center connectivity. Um, even more in, 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 in North America than, than in Europe, but Europe hopefully is catching up. And uh, not only um, the demand is increasing, but we also see uh, some of our customers um, asking for, for, for bandwidth that is completely unprecedented, including, of course, uh, uh, dark fibers and a number of fiber pairs that that, is, that have never been seen and nobody would have imagined uh, f five years ago. So yes, it's a big change. Now, sovereignty is a massive topic in the industry right now. Uh, how does Aurelian play a role in enabling sovereign strategies? And what business opportunities does the growing interest in digital sovereignty bring to Aurelian? I think we can, we can claim that uh, we are uh, one of the only, if not the only, pan-European uh, global uh, connectivity provider that is uh, owned one hundred percent owned by 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 EU shareholders, and I think these days it is becoming increasingly important, and it is now being acknowledged that uh, that we can definitely play a role in 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 building indeed. Um, uh, sovereign sovereign clouds, sovereign AI factories, where we see ourselves 
as a, a, a I would say, a potentially preferred uh, connectivity partner. That is one thing. Uh, on, on, on the other hand, we are also, uh, as you know, I mean, uh, originally a Nordic company and we own a very dense uh, network in, in, in Scandinavia with our own ducts and fibers. And, uh, well, uh, Scandinavia is a, a cool place, but a hot spot for for data center and, and, and the building of new data centers. And that is also where we, we, we are convinced we can definitely play an increasing role. And there is also an increasing interest in, 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 in places like, like Baltics and some parts of Eastern Europe that are naturally connected to, to, to Scandinavia. And as you may, yeah, as you may have seen, we recently announced that we are uh, building uh, a, a new route uh, across the Baltics, connecting Scandinavia to to Poland across the Baltics and all the, the important Baltic cities. And we do this uh, partly with the financial support of uh, the EU. Now, uh, you mentioned uh, the, the Baltics there, um, and that brings up the, the, the topic of security. Uh, how is uh, Aurelian dealing with the multiple physical and cyber security challenges facing long distance network operators currently, especially in areas such as the Baltics? Well, thank you for the, the question, Ray. It's a, it's a good and important question and timely question. I guess, well, uh, it, it has been uh, made uh, public that, uh, well, some, some submarine cables had uh, several incidents in the Baltics recently. Some of them we are involved in or one, one of them belongs to us. Uh, I think it's important to, to remind uh, the audience that when, when, I mean, when such things happen, we have very standard procedures. I mean, I mean, people need to know that there are more than 500 cable cuts uh, all over the world, the submarine cable cuts all over the world every year. And when this happens, I mean, the, the first priority is to make sure that the, the traffic is restored and that the impact for customers is, is minimal and we, we communicate with our customers. Now, in, in, in the specific uh, situation in the Baltic, in the Baltics, there are, of course, serious assumptions that some of these cuts have, have been of a voluntary nature and, uh, it is it is a very good thing that now all the countries around the, the Baltics are, are joining efforts to to monitor the region and using new technologies um, that will definitely help. Uh, and where I mean the, the, the private operators will of course, will of course uh, support and, and and collaborate, but this is something that that needs to be to be addressed by, by countries and government. Private companies cannot, you know, monitor a sea. Um, so I guess that's the most, that's the most important for us once again is to, to, uh, at all times ensure diversity, redundancy and minimal service impact for customers while cooperating with government and the several authorities that are now taking, I mean, a lot of very good initiatives to, to make the Baltic safer. Yes, absolutely. Um, and then in terms of cyber security uh, for a company like uh, Aurelian, is, is the, the, the threat of potential cyber security um, incursions uh, are growing as it is for uh, enterprises? And is this something that you've had to focus a bit more on in the last couple of years? Yes, like every company and well, and like every company we have a uh, I mean, uh, uh, a security department that we, that we made more robust and that we equipped with, with, with more tools. And we, I mean, and we, and we have a whole uh, governance around this, whereby we, we, we hope that, uh, I mean, uh, everything we can do to protect, uh, to protect the network, uh, uh, has been done. And, uh, there is a, a very big difference between, you know, network security and, and, and IT security, right? Again, we, uh, we've also ensured that, I mean, that we, there are all the necessary segregations and, and, and backup. Now, are we completely immune? I would say no, because nobody is. But uh, yes, it is increasingly important. Yes, we have um, increased our capability 
and the robustness with um, uh, you know latest tools and technology and an associated governance. Now, finally, the the long distance fiber network sector is known for its pretty thin margins and intense competition. Uh, how can Aurelian grow its revenues and margins in the future? Well, that's a very good question. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I guess when it comes to 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 Aurelian. Uh, uh, we have a, a strategy of what we call a selective expansion. We we cannot and don't want to be everywhere. Uh, so we are very much focused, of course, uh, uh, on our core uh, Nordic region where we own very strong uh, network assets. Um, we are very much focused on North America extending to to Mexico uh, and then some part uh, towards the more of the east of, of, of Europe, we stay away from the, what is called the, the, the flaps where, I mean, many of our com very distinguished competitors are, but the competition is cutthroat. And we believe that, uh, how can we grow? Well, again, Aurelion is, is, is a bit of a specific uh, animal, I would say, in the space, uh, given the fact that we our revenues are coming from both the IP layer with IP transit, where we are world number one, and from the, the, the transport layer with the waves and, and internet. So we've got the transport and we've got the service, and we have one leg in Europe and one leg in, in America. So we believe that um, this, I would say, what I call double de-risking still provides uh, reasonable growth opportunities in the future. Okay, well, it'll be interesting to see um, how the AI infrastructure development uh, continues in the next few years, whether the investments talked about uh, actually come to fruition and end up in that infrastructure, and how digital sovereignty plays out and impacts the, the potential of companies like Aurelian. So, uh, Daniel, thanks very much for joining us today. Great to talk to you. and. Look forward to catching up in, in 2026 to find out how the market is developing. Yes, for sure. Thanks for having me and, and definitely looking forward to the next conversation. Thank you.